Hey, this is Coriel, founder and CEO of the Single Wives Club, and you are listening to WRUG Life and Style. Well, good afternoon. You are listening to WRUG Media, and we have the wonderful Coriel with who is from the Single Wife Club. So we are excited. Um, if you could give us a little information about yourself and how you came about with this wonderful idea. Definitely. Well, I am Coriel. I am the founder and CEO of the Single Wives Club, and I started the organization in 2011, um, and it was actually out of personal need. So I started it right here in my condo, in my living room, um, just getting my girlfriends together, trying to feed off of one another, figure out what we could do to become better, um, try to figure out how we could better navigate the dating scene so that we could find quality men and prepare for healthy relationships. And so from sharing things like recipes to um, sharing the different skills that we had and figuring out other skills that we needed to know in order to prepare to become wives, that's how I um, started the organization. And from posting on social media and the word just kind of getting out, that's how it actually became the business that it is today. Um, And so today, Our mission is to educate and to empower single ladies to become better women before becoming wives. And so that is what the Single Wives Club is all about. Oh, okay. Now, how did you come up with the demographic uh, that's on your website, the, the typical woman that you have outlined on your website? Which which woman are you referring to? Well, I, I'm looking at your website, and it has uh-huh. the single wife is an educated woman in her late 20s to early 30s. And is it the media a, kit? Yes, yes. Okay, so the media kit, that is our actual demographic. That isn't projected. That, those are the numbers of our members. So we have oh. um, right at 250 members um, across the nation, not just here in Atlanta, but we have members in 18 different states. And so those are our actual demographics. That is who our members are. Oh, that's interesting because I was wondering, I was like, okay, is this the lady that she's trying to attract to her organization? Oh, no, no, no. No, oh, so, that's good. So, and I can tell you who, well, that's a good idea, uh, you know, the technical terms of the percentages and the numbers as far as who she mm-hmm. is, but just, to explain better who she is, she is a professional woman. She is, you know, usually an entrepreneur or she's in her career, um, and she just feels like she wants more. She knows that she's, you know, successful in some areas of her life, but she finds that the relationship is the missing piece, and that is who the typical single wife is. It's the woman who may have it all together, you know, but she knows that she still wants to become a wife, still wants to prepare for a healthy relationship because she doesn't want one without the other. And so that is the typical um, single wife. That's who she is. She she knows that, you know, she's out here enjoying her life. She may be dating. She may be, you know, entertaining people, but she knows that she wants to be able to make better choices and to prepare herself for the responsibility of being a wife. So that is, in layman's terms, that's who a single wife is. Oh, okay. So, um how do you feel about that 42%? You know, how it's always that that study that gets put out there for African-American women to kind of put a damper on their spirit saying, oh, 42% of African-American women. Hello? Hello? Yes. Did you hear me? No, oh, it went out. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, hear it. Okay. I heard all I heard was forty two percent. Okay, can you hear me again? Uh huh, I can hear you. Okay. What I was saying, you know how every now and again there's a study that gets put out there saying, oh, 42% of African American women will never get married. How is your club, your organization, addressing that and kind of dispelling that uh, study? Well, I don't necessarily think that we have to dispel it because if those are the numbers, those are the numbers. I think that we have to decide what we're willing to do about it. So instead of Mm -hmm. saying, you know, woe is me, society's not going to bring me down, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to empower yourself? What are you going to do to prepare yourself 
so that you don't become a statistic. That's the same with saying, you know, whatever the percentages are with African American men going to going to prison. Well, if I'm an African American man, it's up to me to decide that I'm not going to be one of those statistics. So the choices mm-hmm. that I make, the activities that I involve myself in, the people that I hang around they are going to reflect my intentions. So if I'm an African-American woman and I know that I'm working against all of these different things, I have to go into it knowing that I'm going to have to put in some work. I'm going to have to do a few things that maybe other people haven't done, maybe I haven't seen um, being done before. But if I want something different, I'm going to have to do something different. And so that is what the single wife understands. She understands that we do have all these different things working against us, that society doesn't necessarily want us to even understand what a healthy relationship looks like what a wife really is. So we have to combat all these different things, but that is the reality. And I am very big on being realistic and not creating some type of fantasy. You know, tell me what it is that I need to do and I can figure out a plan to get to doing it. So instead of, if you tell me that these are the statistics that I need to come up with a plan for myself so that I can ensure that I'm not one of those numbers. And so I come from a family of no married couples. There's no, there's one married couple that is my cousin. And, you know, I don't have any aunts, any any um, older family members that have healthy relationships. And so that is definitely one of the driving forces behind this organization is just that you have a chance to get something different if you do something different. So if we continue to make excuses and just repeat what we've seen done, then we're going to continue to get those same results. So I don't necessarily think we have to dispel that. I just think we have to come up with a plan to figure out what we can do to make sure that we are not a part of that number. Uh, That makes perfectly good sense, honestly. So you said you created this organization out of personal need. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what I meant by that, um, in 2010 I was engaged. And so when I ended the engagement, I mean, I was engaged to the point where the wedding, it was paid for, I had a dress you know, save the dates were out. We'd had a, an engagement party. I mean, we had done every everything that there was to do. Um, and I realized that this was not the person for me. This was not a healthy relationship. This is not what I wanted my life to be. And so I ended it. And I that was the crossroads that I came to. I had to decide whether I was going to continue what was comfortable, um, you know, and go on with, you know, being comfortable, having a ring, being comfortable with the, the illusion of being in a happy relationship and being a wife and all that type of stuff, or I could choose myself and choose to um, get out of it and and jump out into the unknown, you know, and, and figure it out. I had to trust myself to figure it out, and that is what I, what I decided to do. And in figuring it out, I wanted to decide what I contributed to the failure of the relationship. You know, I didn't want to just blame him. I wanted to know, well, what did I do, you know, to cause – the relationship to, to turn into what it did so that I can prevent myself from doing that again in the future because I realized that just because he wasn't the right person for me, that doesn't mean that there is no right person for me. That just means that I have to do better picking next time and I have to become better so that I can attract better. And so that was the foundation of everything that the Single Wives Club is, was just me on a personal journey to figure out how I could become better and what I needed to do to prepare to become healthy so that I could prepare for a healthy relationship. So when I say I started out of personal need, the the parties, the, the cooking parties that I mentioned earlier with my girlfriends in my living room, we were literally having potluck dinners where they had to bring a dish and they had to bring a recipe, and we were trying to teach each other the different recipes that we knew so that we could really, you know, enhance our, our cooking portfolio or learn new new cooking skills in preparation of becoming wise. And so at these dinner parties, that's when we started talking about all the other skills that we needed and, you know, what what we were experiencing in dating. And so it was really a a, you know, in home, this is a, you know, a really heated discussion. This is what we're experiencing. This is what we want. This is what we're willing to do about it. And that is how the Single Wives Club was born. So it was really a group of single women who said, this is what we're experiencing. What can we do about it? How can we prepare for something more? And out of that, that core group, has anybody gotten married since then? Yeah, we have two. So there were 12 of us, um, 12 of us, when I started it in my house, two are married, one is engaged right now. Um, so those those numbers aren't too bad, and that was in 2011. I officially started the Single Wives Club as a business in 2012. Okay, all righty. And, and so in all of that, I know um, looking at some of your other interviews, I see that you have some experts coming in to teach some other things also. 
Tell me a little bit about that. (laughs) So we like to approach everything from a holistic um, standpoint, meaning that we don't Uh want you to just know how to cook and know how to clean and be a you know, a domestic diva, but you need to you need to know about finances, you need to know about goal setting for your family, you need to know about health, you need to know about seduction, you need to know about sexual health, you need to know how to keep things spicy, you need to know everything from sexuality to spirituality and everything in between. And so our workshops, our events, um, our speakers, our interviews, our classes, our coaching calls will cover everything from, um, like I said, health and wellness and fitness to communication and dating and love and self-help and self-awareness, and we're covering it all. We're talking about it all, and I like to compare it to the Girl Scouts. You know, I was a Girl Scout for years when I was when mm-hmm. I was younger, and we learned all types of skills. We learned everything from crafts to cooking to we were out hiking. We were, you know, we were camping. We did everything because that is how you become a well-rounded person, and so these days we have a lot of women who are really, really good in the professional the business, the, the um, you know, that world, but then our personal lives are in shambles. And so the Single Wives Club addresses the whole woman. We're talking about everything from, like I said, your your spirituality to your, your mental health, your physical health, and everything in between because you need to be sound in all of those areas in order to really be a healthy um, contributor to a, a relationship. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you are alluding to the seduction, um, the seduction class, which is what everybody always brings up. <laughs> but, no, honestly, uh, that's just one portion of it. I was really interested in, in a lot of the different classes and things that you were saying on your uh, your media kit, they're very interesting. And, and one thing that stood out even more so than the seduction part was the softness that a woman has to have towards the man mm-hmm. and, and how sometimes being a strong black woman, an independent strong black woman, we don't always know how to be that soft uh, creature towards our, our mates and spouses. Right. So, and I will that, tell you that, that is definitely one of the major complaints that men have. And it's really, I feel like it's because we are the generation that are the first to experience the leading woman. You know, we are the first generation mm-hmm. of female CEOs and bosses and, and female breadwinners and all that type of stuff. So we have to figure out how to balance it. Nobody is really around to teach us how to do it because the people older than us, they weren't on the same wavelength. You know, they weren't, they were doing things differently. And so we are having to figure that out while trying to live it. You know, it's, it's, it's on the job training. We are living it and learning at the same time. And so Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that is, again, when, when I say we're fighting for so so many different things, that is one of those things that it's reality. We can't do anything about it. We just have to figure it out. But men complain all day long that they don't want a woman who thinks she's a man. You know, they want a woman who enjoys being a woman, who's soft and feminine, and who's not coming home trying to control every single thing. And so that is is definitely hard, but that is something that we have to um, address and have to work out and work through. So that's what are your thoughts on submission? Is that uh, a concept of submission right there or, you know, because a lot of men, they think submission is, oh, you do what I say when I say it and, and you cook, you clean, you barefoot and pregnant type thing. What are your thoughts on submission then? Well, I think that you have to, I think that you in your relationship, you have to define and redefine all of those things when you are in a relationship. And it may be a different definition in this relationship than it will be in your marriage or your last mate may have, you all may have agreed on a different definition of that than, you know, you will, you will the next time around. And I think that a healthy definition of that is supporting one another and the the team us mentality of every decision that we that we make we are keeping in mind our common goal that to me is what submission means and so i think that that is the purpose of any relationship is to build something mutually beneficial together that is what a relationship is all about. And so to me, submission is submitting to that relationship, submitting to that partnership, not necessarily submitting to that person, because if I'm submitting to you, you are submitting to me. And together, we are submitting to this plan that we have created. So if you have a plan and a purpose with your relationship, then you're both submitting to that common goal. And it's not a 
greater than, less than, leader, follower type of thing. It's this is the goal that we are working for as a couple. And so all our actions, our thoughts, our effort, our energy, everything we do is working towards this goal. And so that is how we're submitting to one another. So I think that we just get a lot of these terms um, confused or we come up with bad definitions and then, you know, that leaves a negative um, a negative perception of it. But you just have to create your own definition. My definition of submission might not be yours and it might not work for you, but I have to come up with what is comfortable for me and, you know, the relationship that I want to be in. So I don't think submission is bad. I think we just need to redefine it. I, I do understand. So why should a person like myself, I'm a young, single woman, career-oriented, newly, a new mother, why should mm-hmm. I sign up? You know, I, I've i been through the relationships here, there. What What is in it for me if I sign up? What can I look forward to on a, a daily basis or a monthly basis? Well, generally speaking, um, and I'll tell you like all of the all of the things that are included with membership, like the the benefits mm-hmm. of membership. But just from a personal standpoint, what you'll get from membership is encouragement, is support, it's learning new things about yourself because self awareness is everything. Once you can get to the bottom of the energy that you're putting out, how you're attracting different things into your life, how you continue to end up in the same situations. Once you can peel back those layers and get to the bottom of what you are putting out there then you can create something special. You can save space and open up for a healthy relationship because just because, you know, my members aren't all women who, you know, aren't dating. They are women who are getting dates, going out, meeting nice guys, but these aren't, they're not making good choices or they are not, um, they're not sticking to their standards. And so we're talking about everything from how you can communicate better to last week, um, Last Tuesday, a couple days ago, we talked about effective communication and body language, just small pointers that every woman needs to know, personal development. It's not just for a woman who wants to be married tomorrow or next month or next year. This is for a woman who wants to consistently improve. And so we don't just talk about relationships, but we have personal development challenges where we're talking about health and wellness. Um, We have um, group coaching where we're talking about goal setting and organizing and planning and starting a business. And so we are reaching all aspects of the woman from finance to health to wellness to spirituality and everything in between. And a lot of women have some emotional issues that, that you may not even know that you have, but it's the root cause of why you continue to get into, into relationships that aren't healthy or why you continue to attract the same type of people or find yourself experiencing the same types of things over and over. And so a lot of times our, our coaching call or a, um, a, a post in our, in our, um, in our private um, online group, anything can trigger something within you that can help you to improve your life. And so every single day we're getting feedback from people who are saying, you know, now that I'm doing, now that I'm utilizing affirmations, you know, I, I'm, I'm creating happier experiences throughout my day. Now that I am, you know, using my vision board, I am seeing things manifest. Now that I am smiling more when I go out, I'm seeing that people approach me differently. We're talking about everything from flirting to being a better woman. And so anybody can benefit because everything that we're talking about is from a positive, um, healthy uh, place. And so any any woman can benefit whether you are ready for a relationship or not. So say we become these wonderful, great women full of inspiration and we're attracting the right type of guy and what have you probability of how many women getting married or having relationships from that because we have a small group of men, what are are you going to do to kind of help prep those other men to get them? Are you going to get some guys together and have a single husband's club or, you know, because we got to get those men in gear too. Definitely, and that is a question that I get all the time, but I have to say that my purpose is is for the women, and there is a man out there who can do some wonderful things that these men definitely need, but I, I think that as women – what we the only way that we can guarantee that the men can get it together is how we are raising our sons. That is it. We can't change grown men. You know, we can show them, we can lead them, we can try to um, you know, to, to 
to help them, but the only way that we can guarantee that as a whole society of men we can get it together is how we are bringing up our sons. And so that is what my contribution will be to men. You know, I don't have it in me to do a single husband's club. I get that all the time. I hope somebody, you know, does it. But my purpose is to educate and to empower women. And so I don't, I can't think about all of the other factors that could possibly work against that. All I can think about is, is what I can do. And what I can do is, is empower women and make an impact on women uh, worldwide. That is my purpose, and that is what I feel that I am here to do. So however I can support, you know, somebody coming up with the Single Husbands Club, more power to them, but I can't. That's not, that's not my concern right now. I'm just trying to do what I can do for the ladies. Not your ministry. I do understand. <laughs> have, have you had any um, celebrity backing yet or any interest from any single ladies in the entertainment field? You know, I have a lot of um, – I'll say the celebrity backing comes from women. I mean, not, not women. I'm sorry, from wives. Wives are, are – who, wives are my biggest supporters because they're the ones who say, man, I wish I would have had this before I got married. A girl, I, I got some things I need to share. Those are the people who can really identify with it. I will tell you, single women are the hardest sell. Single women who have it going on, who are making money and running businesses and, and you know, have degrees, they, you can't tell them anything. And so they are the ones that really have to come around to saying, you know what, I do want to improve in this area. You know what, I can't afford to, to get better in this way. So the, the celebrity backing that I have from, you know, from Nisi Nash to Ronnie Tyler, who is um, black and married with kids.com, I have a lot of backing from from married women. Um, but, you know, the, the single women, they're, they're going to come around. Um, so all hope is not lost. But definitely wives are always the ones who say, you know, man, I really wish that, you know, there was something like this that could have shown me a few things or could have saved me a little headache um, in the beginning. So we, we definitely get a lot of support um, from all women, but definitely from wives in particular. Mm-hmm. Well, with this whole Ray Rice abusive situation, what are your thoughts on the actual wife, her becoming a wife? You know, a lot of people want to blame her or say, well, why did she marry him and everything? What are your thoughts? Um, well, my director of our mentoring program, which is called the Wives Society, they are like our big sister organization. They're full of happy wives. And one quote that they always say is that all married women are not wives. So just because you go through a ceremony, just because you have a ring on your finger, that does not give you the respect of being a wife. When I think of wife, I'm not thinking about Real Housewives, I'm not thinking about basketball wives, I'm thinking about Claire Huxtable, I'm thinking about the wives who were showing and training and bringing up positive, you know, human beings who were shaping society. That is what a wife is. So just because you say, you know, I've gone through this legal process, to me, in my opinion, that does not make you a wife. That makes you someone who has signed a document, you know. So my perspective on the whole thing is that we have to come up with a new definition of what love is and we have to create a new picture of a healthy relationship. Um, I never want to blame, you know, a victim in anything, but I do feel like we just have to support one another and and make it okay to seek help because I definitely think that these are two unhealthy individuals that can never be healthy together until they get themselves together individually. So that is my take on it, that we as a society have to stop laughing at violence sometimes and then, you know, get mad and, and wanting to, to you know, torch somebody, you know, the, the next time around. We laugh sometimes. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's entertainment. Sometimes we make excuses. And so I think that as a whole, we just have to, you know, stop supporting it at all. It's never funny. It's never good. It's never okay. And so I think that we have to come up with, you know, new standards of what love is, what marriage is, what's acceptable, what is entertainment. Um, and, and until we do that, we're going to continue to have these these children committing suicide, these, you know, these, these men hitting women. It's just all of it is just going to continue until we get to the root of all of it. So that's my opinion on, on the Ray Rice situation. Mm-hmm. And you were stating something about your mentorship 
uh, programs. Now, how many do you have? You said you have wives supporting single women, and do you have some other ones? Are you marketing towards some younger ladies? Uh, like we have teens, so right possibly? so right now we have um, the Single Wives Society, which is for single women, um, and then mm-hmm. we have the Wives Society, which is a mentoring program that is for married women. And next year, starting um, January 2015, we will be um, we will be launching our college programs for college women. And so we do definitely understand, and I have a background in education, so I am definitely, you know, working toward reaching all the way down to, to our, our younger girls. But for now, you know, we're taking a step-by-step step to, to, to reach back and to start it as early as we can because we are combating so many different things um, within media and within social media and just, Every, you know, there's so many different things being thrown at us that it's hard for adult women to get it together. So you can only imagine what it is like trying to grow up in all of this. And so we are definitely um, looking forward to starting with college women um, in 2015 and working our way down, um, as far down as we can possibly go, so that we are reaching and impacting um, women, girls, and, and, and females worldwide. So is there any advice that you would like to put out there right now, given all the craziness that's going on across America and the world that you would like to put out there to the WRUG media listeners? Just that um, real love exists and that it's possible to create healthy and happy relationships if you can become a healthy and happy individual um, and that, you know, never get discouraged by, by the what is put in front of you because you can always create your own reality. You can create the life that you want to live. And so you never have to be confined by um, the boundaries that other people try to set for you. And that's in life, that's in love, that's with your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations. You can be, do, and have anything that you can imagine. And so that is for men, women, young, old, everybody across the board. Mm 